step into the shimmering sands of nostalgia, where time itself seemed to dance in unpredictable spirals. Do you remember that first flicker of curiosity as you stumbled upon the enigmatic 1974 TV series, Land of the Lost? A show that defied expectations, whisking you away on a turbulent journey through a world forgotten by time. The mere mention of it conjures a symphony of memories, the thrill of discovery, the pangs of suspense, and the irresistible allure of the unknown. Perhaps you found yourself spellbound by the Marshall family's extraordinary predicament, their humble expedition gone awry, marooning them in an alien realm where dinosaurs roamed freely and ancient mysteries beckoned from every shadowy corner. Those nights spent peering at the screen, eyes wide, heart racing. Those are moments etched in the sands of time, where Land of the Lost became more than just a TV show. It was a portal to boundless imagination. Can you recall the tingling excitement as each episode unfolded, weaving tales of survival and friendship amidst the untamed prehistoric backdrop? The cunning of Chaka, the wonder of the Slee Stack, and the constant pursuit of home, these were the threads that wove a tapestry of adventure you couldn't help but get lost in. But now, as the currents of time carry us forward, let's revisit this timeless gem with a handful of intriguing facts that have long lingered beneath the surface. Peel back the layers of nostalgia and uncover the hidden gems that make Land of the Lost a true marvel of its era. In the enigmatic world of the 1974 TV series Land of the Lost, one intriguing shift raised eyebrows and sparked urban legends. During its final season, the show's protagonists, the Marshals, and their prehistoric friend Chaka relocated from their familiar cave abode to a mysterious Sleestack temple. Speculation arose that this move was prompted by a fire that consumed sets from another show by Sid Croft and Marty Croft, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. However, this theory unravels upon scrutiny. The blaze that engulfed the Sigmund sets transpired during its second season, while Land of the Lost was only in its inaugural production phase, unconnected in studio and timing. The initial two seasons of the show unfolded within distinct studios from Sigmund. In a surprising twist, the series migrated to Goldwyn Studios for its third season, coincidentally the very site where the earlier fire had ravaged the Sigmund landscapes. Furthermore, an intriguing tidbit surfaces about the origins of the character Chaka. The show's writer, David Gerald, bestowed the moniker upon the endearing creature, drawing inspiration from none other than the musical artist Chaka Khan. As fate would have it, Chaka Khan's hit track, Tell Me Something Good, held radio waves in a tight grip just as Land of the Lost was germinating in development. Not immune to behind-the-scenes drama, the series witnessed discord between producers and lead actor Spencer Milligan post its second season. Swiftly written out, the character underwent a transformation. In a stroke of ingenuity, series writer and producer John Kubitschin assumed the role for the third season's opener, marking a noteworthy transition. In the shadow of primeval landscapes and fantastical happenings, the intricate tapestry of Land of the Lost unravels tales both on screen and off, bridging the realms of creativity and the unexpected. In the realm of 1970s television, the iconic series Land of the Lost stands as a testament to imaginative storytelling and behind-the-scenes dynamics that shaped its course. A chance encounter brought together star Wesley Ura and creator Sid Croft through a mutual friend, birthing a partnership that would anchor the show. Ura's audition process, while a formality, showcased Croft's unwavering confidence in his chosen star, as Ura was pitted against a slew of hopefuls to forge his TV family. A distinctive feature of the show's third season was the melodious twist it introduced. Wesley Ura, the versatile lead, showcased his musical prowess by performing songs at the culmination of select episodes. These lyrical compositions not only entertained but also encapsulated the moral lessons imparted by the episode's narrative, leaving audiences with resonating takeaways. However, not all was harmonious in the land of the lost. The departure of Spencer Milligan, who portrayed Rick Marshall, after the first two seasons sent ripples through the series. A salary dispute with creators Sid and Marty Croft led to Milligan's exit, a rift board of divergent opinions on profit sharing from merchandise sales. Milligan's character, Rick, was ingeniously woven out of the narrative through a time tunnel, seamlessly clearing the path for his brother Jack to re-enter the fold, reuniting with his niece and nephew in a twist of the time-bending plot. In the grand tapestry of Land of the Lost, these threads of human connection 
tension, creative expression, and contractual disputes intertwine to shape a show that remains etched in the annals of television history. The series' longevity and influence, anchored by these multifaceted aspects, continue to reverberate through the decades. Van Snowden's twinkling transformation in Land of the Lost's The Zarn in the kaleidoscope of 1970s television, Land of the Lost stood as a mesmerizing gem, beckoning viewers into a prehistoric world of adventure and enigma. Amidst the show's cavalcade of curious creatures and time-defying escapades, one character, the Zarn, shone with a unique brilliance, courtesy of Van Snowden's intricate performance and an ingenious technical setup. The Zarn, a recurring figure in the series, was no ordinary role for Van Snowden. Clad in a blue nylon body stocking adorned with silver reflectors, Snowden entered the character's shimmering persona. But his journey didn't stop at wardrobe and makeup. Snowden's challenge lay in performing on a blue screen set, a distinct departure from his experience in puppeteering larger-than-life characters. This adjustment mandated a certain subtlety, a toning down of his typically expansive gestures. To bring the Zarn to life, Snowden had to master the art of nuance. Central to the Zarn's allure was his twinkling glow, achieved through a symphony of colored lights that danced and flickered around him. This ethereal radiance transformed the Zarn into an enigmatic entity, one that captivated the audience's imagination. The fascinating tale of the Zarn's creation is a testament to the convergence of artistry and technology that defined Land of the Lost. The show, a beacon of Saturday morning entertainment, found its stride in the most curious of places, from Van Snowden's adaptability to the mesmerizing dance of lights. In its three-season run, Land of the Lost left its indelible mark, whisking viewers away on a time-bending journey. And amidst the primordial landscapes and captivating narratives, the Zarn's twinkling presence remains a testament to the show's ability to transport us to worlds beyond our own. Challenges of voicing a Nick in Land of the Lost revealed recording audio for a Nick, the iconic character from the 1974 TV series Land of the Lost, brought about unexpected hurdles. The intricate mask worn by Walker Edmiston, the actor behind a Nick, posed difficulties in capturing clear sound. A clever solution emerged as a headband sporting a dangling microphone perched on the bridge of Edmiston's nose. Speaking softly was key to minimizing echoing during recording sessions. The mask's intricate design, while visually captivating, inadvertently muffled Edmiston's voice, necessitating innovative adjustments to ensure seamless audio quality. The headband, an ingenious workaround, allowed for more effective sound capture by situating the microphone closer to the source of speech. Land of the Lost, a beloved show that enthralled audiences with its captivating prehistoric world and memorable characters, was not exempt from the challenges of production. The saga of Enix's distinctive voice and the inventive headband stands as a testament to the resourcefulness demanded by the entertainment industry. The dedication to overcoming obstacles behind the scenes contributed to the show's enduring legacy. In the annals of television history, the tale of Enix's vocalization showcases the fusion of creativity and problem-solving that goes into crafting captivating narratives. The ingenuity displayed by the production team adds a layer of appreciation to the viewing experience, allowing fans to delve deeper into the remarkable journey of Land of the Lost. This article dives into the lesser-known challenges faced by the cast and crew of the 1974 TV series Land of the Lost during the recording of Enix Audio, shedding light on the innovative solutions that contributed to the show's success. Land of the Lost's enduring impact on popular culture is further enriched by understanding the behind-the-scenes efforts that made it a cherished classic. Wesley Eura, the unseen presence in Land of the Lost's digital realm in the nostalgic realm of television. Few series have left as lasting an impression as the 1974 classic, Land of the Lost. Venturing into a prehistoric world rife with mystery and adventure, viewers were captivated by the escapades of the Marshall family. Yet, behind the scenes, a lesser-known figure has maintained a unique connection to the show's creator, Sid Croft, even in the digital age. Wesley Eura, an integral member of the Marshall family as Will, has found a virtual home on Sid Croft's weekly Instagram series, Sundays with Sid. Beyond his on-screen presence, Eura's engagement extends to live streams, where he eagerly interacts with devoted fans. 
Amid the pixels and comments, he weaves tales of the show's inception, anecdotes of its production, and the camaraderie that still binds the cast. As a guest on Croft's series, Yura resurrects the magic of Land of the Lost, sharing a unique behind-the-scenes perspective that only a cast member can offer. It's a testament to the enduring allure of this 1974 gem, one that continues to resonate across generations. And while the prehistoric landscapes and epic adventures may have been confined to the show's original run, Wesley Ura ensures that the spirit of Land of the Lost As remains vividly alive the captivating the world realm. of the 1974 TV series Land of the Lost. Let's take a moment to journey back to the enigmatic realm of the Sleestacks and the unforgettable adventures of the Marshall family. Like stepping through a temporal doorway, this series invited us to venture into the unknown, to suspend our disbelief and embrace the fantastical. Whether you were glued to the screen during every heart-pounding encounter or found yourself daydreaming about the mysteries of the land of the lost lawn after the credits rolled, there's no denying the impact it left on our imaginations. It's the shared memories, the quiet contemplation over the unanswered questions, and the countless conversations it sparked that truly embody the magic of this timeless show. As we reflect on the subtle echoes of laughter and the tinge of nostalgia that the Land of the Lost still brings to our hearts, I invite you to share your most cherished memories and thoughts. What curious corners of your mind did this series unlock? Did it inspire your own dreams of adventure? Was it a cherished family moment, huddled around the TV screen, eager to see what awaited the Marshalls next? Your unique connection to this cherished show is a piece of the intricate fabric that makes it all the more special. Your reflections are the spark that keeps the torch of appreciation burning brightly. So, let your thoughts flow like the gentle river that winds through the mystical land, and let's continue to celebrate the extraordinary escapades that have shaped our love for storytelling. Thank you for taking this journey down memory lane and for sharing your heartfelt stories. Your time and interest are treasures that keep the essence of the land of the lost alive. Until we unravel more mysteries together, keep the flame of curiosity burning and let's continue to explore the uncharted territories of our imaginations. With gratitude,